<laughs> Jazz. <laughs> All right, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Yes. The spice of life. Hey guys, what's up? So, I remember very clearly trying to... trying to play jazz at high school. And I remember people told me that I should learn two fives. And honestly, I didn't really get it. And when I also learned the two fives, it was, it was kind of robotic. It was just like kind of play the line and I was trying to squeeze it into a place, kind of sort of like, you know, learning the word carburetor and then just kind of randomly like saying it in a, in a sentence without any context. Good so, morning, Bruno. Carburetor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. And, and what I want to talk about today, what I want to do is, is try to like kind of understand in a little deeper way how to use these ideas, these lines. So what happened today is that around 7.30 a.m. I wrote nine to five lines. Um, not sure why even. And, and then I was like, ah, oh, it's kind of cool. And, um, and the idea is that Gabriel and I will talk about these lines. Well, he doesn't know the two fives yet, so I'm gonna show him the line. We'll talk about it, but what's more interesting is how can we make this line kind of ours, right? It's not just like, okay, cool, we played a line that you know I wrote, whatever. And also the lines that I wrote are just a part of the language. They're not mine in a way. I mean, they're mine, but I transcribe them, I listen, you know, I, I, it's, it's, it's stuff that is like accessible to all. <laughs> Have to keep this, <laughs> <laughs> but but it's basically lines that are accessible to all. All right. So with no further ado, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you these nine lines, and what we're also gonna do is really mix and match between the lines. So uh, we're gonna take elements from part A from the two, and then max. Uh, match it with another line from the five, right? So we can, we have nine lines, but actually maybe we have 81 lines in a way. Did I, was the math correct? <laughs> <laughs> He's a, almost a doctor in math. This is, this is why I'm just double checking myself here. We're dealing with two, five, one in the key of C major for convenience. So D minor seven, G seven, C major seven. Um, if you're interested, there's a PDF with everything notated and tab, so you can see it also might be easier in this case. Check it out here on the Patreon. <laughs> So basically, you can really see, in a way, I'm surrounding the D minor, right? So if you look at the notation, actually, you can see... So on the downbeats, we have like literally... So really articulating D minor. And yes, we have the C sharp in between, we have the E, the 9 in between, the 4, but it's all on the upbeat. Right. right, but still really articulating D minor seven, and then on the five we have this beautiful line. Again, I, I don't have any inclination for the line. It's just like kind of like jazz cliches. But this is a very common thing, basically using um, the diminished the on this on the G. Um, so it just gives us all these beautiful colors. I'll play the chords, and you play it for a second. Sounds good. Three. Let's sing it one time. So I think one of the things that we want to do when we're learning a line is internalize as much as possible. So seeing it in different places, finding different fingerings, finding different octaves to play it, singing it and understanding what the hell is going on there. Because otherwise we're just kind of quoting 
things randomly. And the idea is like for us as a language, because this is what we're trying to do, to improvise and converse in this language, is really understand and feel the pain of the chromatic, the mm. chromaticism. So. <laughs> Pretty high, huh? And the idea is like, yeah, we really want to try and hear that tension when we're when we're playing it, and really be able to kind of imagine it. And it takes time, right? It's not like, you know, one day I woke up and like, oh, let me just sing every two five in the world. No, it's process. We do it. We try. We stumble until we figure it out, kind of. You want to try and sing it? Sure. Just slowly. Exactly, and you can totally support yourself with the chord, like you can be like... Five, number one. Let's go to the second one and then we can start mix and match. Sounds good. The second one, I think I transcribed this one from Brad Mello, if I remember correctly, but yeah, I feel that way. It's probably correct. So. Very simple. Hopefully, we'll be a little more in tune. But basically, what's happening here. Ah, well, I'll show you 2 5 first. So I'm starting here. Exactly, let me just tune this. Basically what's happening here is like we're really playing F major 7, two octaves, mm -hmm. super piano vibe, right? It's like mm -hmm. that kind right. of sound, and I love that sound. Um, and, and that gives us the D minor 7, 9. So this basically gives us the, the 9 on the D minor because we get the major 7 here, the F major 7 basically over the D minor. And then on the G7, the 13, flat 13, and then rest result. Mm. Now maybe play the line. Two, three, one. Yeah, mm. again, simple but kind of effective. Yeah. And now let's try to take, let's see if it works. I, I believe it's gonna work. I mean, if I take the first idea. In this octave just to stay there and then mm. right sounds good so right what I just did was basically taking the beginning of the phrase uh, of phrase number two on the two like the F major 7 arpeggio and then I just mix and match and did the end of the other one. Now, again, a great idea is, is trying to see it in different positions and places on the guitar. If we go back to line number one, for example, say, you know, how about we play it here? Right? Or whatever, here. Or just trying to find it in different areas. Um, I don't know. Right? Like maybe I want to have like with like my first finger or with my fourth finger. Like just trying to find um, different fingering and different places to play the line. And I am thinking about the notes as well. So it's like I'm really thinking like. And again, you can think letters, whatever you want, as long as you're tagging the information as much as possible and trying to listen to the colors, you're doing the right, the right deed. Yes. Cool. Line number three. Goes like this. So what's happening here? I'll play it again slow so you can grab it. So just starting from D again and, and kind of going back, right? One and two and three and four and so really D minor just kind of scale and then doing that idea so it's basically five three two one which is 
very very triadic really articulating this D minor sound and then on the five I did like a little tension like again kind of like a jazz classic vocabulary and what's happening here is like sharp nine flat nine um, flat 13 to the seven Do you have it? Can I try? I think so. Exactly. Yeah, and it's kind of surprising. It's like kind of harsh in a way. Mm. But then the, the resolution feels it's pretty. Feels good. Let's hear it in time. Mm. Yeah, and sometimes people play. Yeah, variations on that are very, very acceptable, but just that kind of color sound. All right, line number four. Here, we're starting to meet some substitutions as well. Um, so I'm gonna play and articulate very clearly D minor, and then D flat, and end it on the major seven. The classic line in a way is this. But I just did this way. <laughs> right? Just like a little thing. You can, again, of course, change anything. The idea is just like seeing the, the seeds of information and then trying to mess with it. Um, so check out the line a little slower so you can grab it. You can totally do the other version as well. Let's find another fingering for that just before we go forward. Um, I'll do it in octave lower and you can do the same. Here, right? Uh, you did. Yeah. So it's fine, but sometimes it's worth like checking out a, a convenient option. The same thing. This is kind of easy. Yeah. Right? <laughs> that one, two, three, five. So the same thing here. Line number five. So I think sound and devices that we're gonna talk uh, in the next couple lines are also very important. So make sure you stick around with us. So line number five goes like this. And this is again, a classic in concept. I think one of the points um, that are trickier for people who are starting to dive into the language is the connecting point between the D minor and the G7 in a way like really the stitch between this moment when it shifts here and that's a very important moment to articulate mm. basically when the chord shifts so here we have just kind of an articulation of the chord and that moment right that d minor seven like playing that c the seven to the three is a very classic kind of like progression and then also at the end of the line if you can see that the 7 of the G7 resolve to the 3 of C. So again, 7 to the 3, 7 to the 3, 7 to the 3. Very, mm. very kind of voice lead um, sound, very, very much uh, in jazz and uh, kind of part of the language. Let's check it out. What I did here is. So 
So the only like thing here, like there are two approach notes, like and then from here, So let's do it one more time. Mm. Exactly. And again, there are many more variations, there are many more options. It's just like seeing the concept, saying like, okay, we have this D minor, we're making playing an approach to the seven, approach to the five, articulating the triad. To the seven and the seven results with the three ascending with a diminished to get the flat nine over the G7 and finishing the line with this mm. kind of line cliche seven to the three. Gotcha. Let's hear it one more time in time. One, two, three, uh. Always add <laughs> all these things, of course. I mean, the end phrase, like, you can totally add all the enclosure. Right? All these are a part of the language, and it's really like you can take your 2 5 and then, like, add like an enclosure. Um, yeah. Line number six. So this line is actually very similar or almost the same as line five. The only thing is kind of I wanted to use the cliche, which is a very kind of like Parker-y, yeah. bebop kind of sound. Again, that sound on the G7, like basically flat nine to the sharp nine, to the seven, to the three. So. So exactly playing the arpeggio like G7 and then hitting instead of again many variations but the point is like you can see how flexible it is like we have like kind of like a D minor sound and then we create more tension on the dominant line seven so here we meet this creature which we haven't seen before and this is the altered so check this line out so I think this is coming from Bill Evans or maybe Bernie Castle or yeah. Wes, one of these, kind of one of these cats. Um, check this out. So starting from the nine. I mean, I wrote it like, okay. but it's totally fine. All these variations are fine. Uh, let's hear it in time. Four. Yeah. Again, simple but really effective. Line number eight. So here there's one more special device that I was using on the dominant. So I was kind of thinking diminish on the G7, but I was thinking approach note. So I was taking this diminish triad, but adding a whole step. Mm. And this is something again that Coltrane did a lot, uh, Bill Evans as well, like messing around with these diminished sounds. Um, so the line sounds like this. so you yeah. can get, grab it.
nothing crazy, but just like the idea of like doing that. And of course, you can take line two and connect it with this idea, for example. So I just did the same thing in reverse. On the diminished. So just, and then diminish idea in reverse or anything, you know, any of Any variation would work, you know, it doesn't have to be any specific thing, but the idea and what I kind of want to talk about is like the concept. It's like, okay, we can grab this idea, we can grab this idea, and we can make it ours. I think that's what's fun and, and cool about it. Yeah. Line number nine. So here I'm articulating D minor. Really simple. And then just kind of jumping and playing the minor scale. No. So eight notes, eight notes, and you can see the chart, and then... Mm. Mm. So we have nine ideas and we have two parts of these ideas, and now I think what I would do is try to memorize the ones you like, and then I would try to write some more in the spirit of these lines, and try to understand the kind of like mechanism that takes place, and then you know, try to play it on one string, try to play it in different areas, try to play it in different key, and then take a blues or solar or a song you know well and implement these lines or implement half of the line, you know? Like utilize that information, try to sing it, try to do all these actions to kind of like absorb the information. Because with all these lines, again, uh, I wrote them, wrote them, I wrote them. <laughs> but, but you no. know, they're not mine in a way. It's like, it's the language. So, you know, it's like, it's out there. And it's just these cliches or these ideas are just articulating those two fives yeah. in, in a beautiful way. And just like in a very attentive way. And in a way, I feel like attention equals love. So in jazz, there's a lot of love toward what's happening in the moment. And what's happening in the moment is this 2-5. And this is like hyper attention. It's like, oh yeah, not only is it 2-5, I'm really gonna say like, <laughs> You know? So it's just like really like hyper attention to all the details. And, and that's beautiful. I think that's that's music. Wow, how did you get there? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's fun. Ah, you, you grabbed it so fast. Amazing. <laughs> it's wild. So thank you guys for listening. I hope this was helpful. Again, um, if you need the PDF, it's on Patreon. If not, power to you. And I'll see you guys very soon. Peace. Goodbye.